Well, welcome back to Guard Force AI's channel, an integrated security AI and robotic as a service provider. And joining to discuss the recent earnings, we have Catherine, the CFO, joining us. First and foremost, welcome. Uh, thank you, Kyle. Thank you for the introduction. It's very nice talking to you today. Yeah, and it's such a pleasure to get you on, especially uh, you guys are on the path to something relatively intriguing here. As Guard Force AI generated over 3.2 million in gross profit, which was up uh, approximately 50% over last year. Do you want to just talk about what's kind of driving these improvements? Sure. Um, thank you for asking that question. And that's actually one of the biggest highlights in the interim filing that's, that we just released a couple of days ago. The 50, let me answer the question, the 50% increase in our gross profit mainly comes from two areas. First of all, um, our always continuous growth strategy of expanding um, into the high margin service, which are focused on our retail customers. Second of all, we uh we we were we started our cost control uh, management you know a, a couple of quarters back and we've seen some really good results in the first half of 2024. And I want to point out that uh for the growth of profit growth the revenue growth from our um uh retail customers really contribute to that growth. And notably, I want to point out our Guard Force digital machine which we introduced a couple of years back, has achieved a growth of over 74%, which is, you know, a huge milestone for us because that, you know, that business is also serving our retail customers. And um, moreover, I also wanted to touch on uh, another aspect, which is our operating cost, which also, you know, reduced by a very meaningful um, 1.5 million or almost 10% of the reduction. And this is a really good result of our streamlined operation, which in turn reduce our labor cost, fuel cost, and our vehicle acquisition investments. And I think looking forward, we'll continue of the, ab up, the above strategy that I mentioned to ensure the company uh, maintains its leadership position in a very competitive market environment. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate the insight and kind of zooming in a little bit more on today as well. Your balance sheet remains strong with 36 million in assets against only 12 million in liabilities, along with your recent reported adjusted net income of 0.1 million versus that loss of 1.8 million this time last year. Do you want to discuss a little bit about the path to profitability and what investors should kind of focus on here a little bit uh, moving forward with such improvements? Sure. Um, I thank you for the question. And I, yeah, that that's another really good uh side that, that that I want to you know also to share on our interim result. So that's like a huge improve, improvement, but that improvement didn't achieve just overnight. We have been continuously managing our asset to strengthen our financial foundation for our ongoing AI development. And um we've done a couple of things and I, I want to mention you know the most important things. First of all, we have been reducing our debt percentage and improving our capital use back in 2023 we have su successfully converted about 15 million of loan into shares and the conversion price was you know premium to the to the market and this has shown that we have maintained long term strategic relationship with our debt owner and afterwards we raised about 23 million you know in the open market uh, through public offering and we also repaid approximately 3.6 million in both in bank loans and related party offerings. So after all those kind of actions and active management, we now have achieved a very healthy balance sheet, you know, um, figure. And going into the future, we will uh, continue to restrict the new debt financing because we do not want to incur, you know, more finance related costs. And we want to strengthen our overall financial um, stability. So I think Going into 2024 and 2025, the end of 2024, we, we already see a healthier operational results and um, you know a lot of the results coming from our effective cost management as well. So we're confident that in the near future, our legacy business will be able to achieve um, stable profitability. And because we have a very strong foundation from our legacy business, going into 2025, we expect to spend more on our AI development, you know, and this um, with the current strong foundation we have, it allow us to allocate more resources into that, you know, AI technology focused industry. Yeah, and speaking of that AI uh, technology, do you want to just give some insight into the growth strategy? I'm on. I mean, uh, what will you be focusing on in the coming years here? 
Yeah, sure. Um, actually, we just uplo uploaded our, our, our deck uh, onto our IR website, you know, um, a couple of weeks ago. And I really want to share that news with, with you and as well as the investors. So going to 2024, um, everybody know we we are a we used to be a, a traditional security solution provider for almost 40 years, for, for 40 something years. And we always have been involved and growing with our customers' emerging needs. With that strategy, our current initiative lies into um, two areas. First of all, we want to continue to expand um, our retail customer base. We have been actively growing our retail customer base first by um, you know, cross uh, our very successful cross sell strategy. We're offering uh, multiple products and service for our for our for our customer that aligns with their needs and also the industry trends. And in that way, that's the reason we can you know maintain such a long term relationship with our customers. And by now, we have been serving over twenty five thousand retail stores you know in in the Asia Pacific area, and that's one of the biggest advantage that we have. And second of our um, growth initiative would be, we want to, as I mentioned before, we want to invest more into our R&D for the AI driven solutions, especially in our retail and um, you know travel industry. As I mentioned, we have huge advantage in those two industries. And um, in the past few years, along with our robotic solutions, we have established a very strong foundation to integrate and, and along with the large language model that we integrated into the our cloud flat platform this year, uh, we are introducing our G5 agents, which is um, AI solution for our customers, especially in the retail and travel industry. And for, for, for all of these solutions, um, we're designing them for our customers' needs from our based on customer needs to match the right products to address their end users, you know, needs. So we're serving our customers and using our cu customer centric strategy again here. So both of our current retail focused services and our expansion into the AI solutions, both of these services are high margin services and solutions that goes beyond the traditional manpower intensive offerings, right? So by integrating all these advanced uh, advantage in our service delivery, we are not only improving our operational efficiency, but also we are delivering greater value to our customers. So um, we believe that by continue to leverage our AI capabilities and continue with our customer centric strategy, um, we do an anticipate significant growth opportunities and which all of these um, you know, really good factors differentiate us from the competitors in the market presence. On that note, we'll pass it off to the viewers as always. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section below and consider subscribing as news and catalysts like this hit the wire. Of course, we'll bring it to you here. But on that, we look forward to catching you in the next one.